Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Carloop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution, and Hankook, driving emotion. Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us. In today's video, I'm going to go through some of the differences between LFP and NMC battery chemistry. With so many cars coming on the EV market, you might have seen some of these terms in reference to the battery chemistry. So I think it's time for us to explain the differences between the two. So as a disclaimer first up, I am not actually an engineer by any means. So I'm only relaying you my learned experience and from what I know from my reading on the internet and from speaking to various experts as well. So let's start off with the difference just in the terminology between LFP and NMC. NMC is what has been traditionally been used in EVs. It stands for Nickel Manganese Cobalt. And it is part of the lithium ion uh, battery pack. Now, of course, both are actually lithium ion, both LFP and NMC. But uh, the LFP part and the NMC part is in reference to the uh, cathode or the positive end of the battery. So NMC stands for nickel manganese cobalt, whereas LFP stands for lithium iron, and that's I-R-O-N, not I-O-N, lithium iron, which is the FE, ferrous component, phosphate, LFP. So LFP, lithium iron phosphate, and NMC, nickel manganese cobalt, which is also lithium iron, sometimes referred to as uh, ternary iron, uh, sorry, ternary, ternary lithium as well. Okay, so that is the difference between the two, and in terms of um, uh, how much it costs to produce either chemistry. Generally speaking, it's a bit cheaper to produce LFP batteries, uh, whereas it's a bit more expensive to produce NMC. Um, conversely though, the energy density between the two is uh, vastly different. Uh, we talk about watt hours per kilogram, so that's like density of the battery in terms of energy per kilogram, and LFP is generally less dense. So we're talking something like 160 watt hours per kilogram, versus uh, NMC batteries, which is usually 250 thereabouts, so 250 watt hours per kilogram. So we're talking almost double in density between uh, lithium iron phosphate and NMC. So the savings that you make by producing the uh, lithium iron phosphate chemistry could somewhat be argued that it's offset by the fact that it's less dense, so you actually need to ship more out to uh, manufacturers, whereas the NMC battery pack is more dense. So even though it costs more to make, you're getting more bang for your buck, so to speak. Of course, the um, what everyone is waiting for is the solid state battery. So something that has no electrolytes, uh, no liquid, so to speak. And that's looking like it's gonna be as dense as 500 watt hours per kilogram. So double the density of uh, NMC and up to three times the density of lithium iron phosphate. How far away is uh, solid state chemistry? I don't know at this stage, so we'll see how we go. But for now, the two chemistries LFP significantly less dense than uh, uh, the NMC battery pack. So that means generally speaking, and this is just in general terms, if you have a car that's uh, a, sh a smaller range, right? So something that's say 40 to 50 kilowatt hours, then, um, then it's probably okay to put a less dense pack in the car. You're not too worried about you know, taking up too much space in the car anyway, because it's a smaller range. Whereas if you want a longer range vehicle, right? So something closer to say 80, uh, kilowatt hours, um, then you're a bit more constrained with how much, how many cells you can put into the car. So generally speaking in the past and even now, automakers tend to put NMC battery packs into long range vehicles. So you'll see, for example, the Tesla Model 3, Model Y and a lot of other brands, the, the, the shorter range, their base model is 60 kilowatt hours and that is an NMC, uh, LFP battery pack, whereas the long range vehicles where, where they've got 80 kilowatt hours, that's usually equipped with an NMC battery pack. So uh, more dense, so you can fit more into the car uh, with you know, constraints and how much you can actually put into the car in terms of the density of the, uh, of the pack. So that, that's kind of you know, one of the big differences between the two. Another one is also cycle life. So when I mean cycle life, so a full cycle of discharge, a charge and discharge is essentially think of the, the cell, like a single cell that's fully used up and then recharged again. So that's counted as one cycle. So traditionally, NMC battery packs have less cycles than LFP battery packs. We're talking in the order of uh, sometimes even triple the amount of, uh, amount of cycles that a, uh, that a LFP pack will have over NMC. So NMC is generally around the 
5,000 to 3,000 depending on manufacturer uh, and I guess the age of the battery. Whereas some LFP battery packs are reaching up to 9,000 uh, cycles now. Um, it's probably probably accepted as around five to six thousand cycles per LFP pack. So we're looking at on average maybe two to three times uh, the number of cycles in LFP versus NMC. This actually is important because you can argue that with more cycles, uh, an LFP battery pack will actually have greater longevity as well. We'll touch on longevity in a second too. Um, and also, you know, when it comes to other applications like V2X, so I'm talking like vehicle to home, vehicle to grid, where you can actually use the car battery to power your home, having those additional cycles in an LFP battery pack, um, it will be important because if you're going to use the, um, the car to power your home, then you'll need those extra cycles as well, so you don't wear the battery out too early. We'll talk about uh, LF, uh, V2X and uh, cycle uh, life in a, in a separate video coming up, so stay tuned as well. So, um, thermal stability, okay, so this is quite controversial, okay, so traditionally speaking, uh, and this is where some marketing, marketing may come in as well, uh, LFP battery producers will say that, um, you know, their LFP packs are more stable when it comes to thermal management and, um, and heat production compared to NMC, so you can, you, can, uh, you can translate or postulate that, yes, it's probably safer, uh, when it comes to you know fire safety, um, they, they talk about the, a magnitude of ten times safer uh, for an LFP battery pack versus an MC. I guess the overarching message I want to reiterate here is that EV batteries and EV cars in general are are safer in terms of less. There is less risk of an EV catching fire than an ICE vehicle. Now, obviously, if an EV catches fire, there's, there's arguments that yes, it's more dramatic. It takes longer to put out all that stuff, but it is like we're talking 20 to 100 times less likely for an EV to catch fire. I've made a video about this very recently, so watch that video. So, um, yeah, and so that's the overarching message I want to put out there. But LFP battery packs, because they've got a lower voltage at the top end, you know, manufacturers will argue that they are a bit safer than uh, NMC battery packs. So that could be something you want to look at if you're deciding between the two, versus LFP versus NMC. And because of this difference in voltage at the top end, we're talking like 80 to 100%, people, uh, the consensus is that you probably should not be charging your NMC battery pack too often past 80%. So I'm talking like, you know, day-to-day -day driving. Uh, for example, I've got a, a nine-year-old Tesla Model S with an NMC battery pack. I would not charge that more than 80% most days. Uh, only if I'm gonna need that extra range or if I'm going for a long drive, then I will charge to past 90%. But you know, this talk about uh, NMCs being uh, not as long lived as, as LFP, I think there's some studies now coming out that that it's not entirely true if you do look up, if you look after the NMC battery pack properly. So by properly, I mean not charging it past 80% uh, on most days, therefore you're not reaching that, that top end state of charge and the voltage won't be as high. Um, so I think if you look after the pack, it'll, it'll last the distance as my Tesla Model S has demonstrated. Um, and also NMCs and just EVs in general, are, you know, there's better uh, thermal management these days. So obviously liquid cooling has improved battery life a lot. You look at the first generation um, Nissan Leaf, for example, without that uh, liquid cooling. Uh, even I think the current generation Nissan Leafs don't have liquid cooling, just relying on air cooling. And you can see how much degradation has occurred uh, just, with, um, just with air cooling alone. So yeah, look after your NMC battery packs. You shouldn't be running into too many issues. Conversely, with, um, with LFP battery packs, because the voltages tend to be uh, more stable, so when I say stable, I mean there's not a hell of a difference between the low end of state of charge versus the top end of state of charge of a LFP battery pack. Sometimes when it comes to the computer of the car calibrating the state of charge, it may not necessarily know, know or correlate the voltage with where the car is with the, when it comes to percentage, right? So generally speaking, um, you should probably, you know, charge your LFP battery pack to 100% fairly regularly. And what does fairly regularly mean? It, that's controversial. Again, something, you know, a company like Tesla will recommend something like once a week. Um, for me, that's about once a week as well. I only charge my car once a week, my BYD seal, because it's got such a large battery pack. Um, but, you know, some might even argue don't charge it as, as often as that, uh, just for the just for the longevity side of things. So I think, you know, as long as you calibrate it 100% fairly regularly, again, that's open the discussion, 
um, then you should be okay. The car should be okay to know where it is in, in, with regards to state of charge and correlate that with the voltage of the battery. NMC, not as much of an issue. As I said, there is a greater discrepancy between the top end and the bottom end of the battery when it comes to NMC. So the car will generally know without calibrating too often what the state of charge is uh, correlating to the voltage of the battery. So we talked about um, thermal stability, uh, charging speed uh, is next. Um, so NMC battery packs um, generally will be able to charge faster. So you know if you look at um, some of the eGMP cars like the uh, Hyundai's, Kia's, Genesis, Porsche's, um, and some of the cars coming out of China with NMC battery packs with 800 volts, you, you can get as fast as you know 250, 300. We're, we're even seeing some charging as close to five to 600 kilowatts these days. Um, and that's where the advantage of the NMC battery pack is. Again, that's due to the higher voltages. LFPs. Um, Generally speaking, even my, even my BYD Seal uh, with an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, it won't charge more than 130, 140 kilowatts, uh, even when it's at a lower state of charge. Um, and that's again to do with the voltage of the battery. Let me just turn left here, guys, real quick. And you know, if you've got a small battery pack, you don't do too much road tripping. Um, that's where LFP is quite handy, having those kind of battery packs in small city cars where DC charging is not as important then AC charging is where uh, you know you need where uh, it's at when it comes to home charging, and that's the slower sort of you know wall connectors that you install at home. So that's uh, charging speed, charging practices. Two more points I want to touch on. Uh, one of them is recycling. You can argue that um, uh, NMC there's more valuable elements in there. So you know commercially speaking, people will be more likely to want to recycle NMC battery packs compared to LFP, which is you know iron phosphate. Or phosphorus that's quite a uh, you know, quite a common element or common materials and, and just back to the point about uh, NMC um, and I guess some people argue that it's not, a, not as ethical uh, harvesting or mining uh, you know cobalt which is quite a rare earth rare element um, there are some unethical you know practices um, for example using child labor to mine that cobalt whereas iron phosphate and LFP is more prevalent uh, more a more common material so there's no not as many issues with that occurring with producing these chemi uh, these battery chemistries, and finally, you know where who produces uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries? Who produces um, you know NMC batteries? So tr if you look at where LFP battery packs are generally made, it's China. So China is probably the number one producer of LFP battery packs. A lot of the a lot of the brands L. Um, you know, CATL, CALB, BYD, those kind of um, producers uh, all use LFP. Uh, and they, you know, fit them in cars like BYD, MG, uh, Xpeng, um, uh, uh, GWM. So all these Chinese brands generally will have LFP, even BYD for the long range cars, like my BYD Seal, which is a long range vehicle, still uses LFP batteries um, and not NMC. So that's, uh, a bit different to other uh, uh, manufacturers like MG will use a uh, NMC battery pack for their long-range vehicles. Some European and American cars are starting to use LFP as well. Uh, for example, a Ford, the Ford Mustang Mark E, is starting to use a uh, LFP battery pack in their vehicles. And the Kia EV5, which is the car I'm actually driving in right now, a Korean manufacturer, this is the first um, Korean EV made in China uh, and it's using a, a BYD or Fin Dreams battery. Uh, I'll do a full review of the uh, Kia EV5 uh, later on so stay tuned for that video. So that's basically a summary of, um, of uh, LFP versus NMC. Um, so you know main points are that uh, LFP is, is cheaper to make, uh, less rare earths, uh, you know, arguably more ethical. Uh, conversely though, the con is that it is less dense. So uh, you've got to use a bigger pack to supply um, a, a bigger range for the car versus NMC, which is you know a more dense battery pack. So you can fit that into a, a vehicle and get more bang for buck, so to speak. Uh, it's got, LFP's got a greater cycle life. So it'll last longer compared to NMC in the order of two to three times. Uh, it's arguably safer because it doesn't reach those high voltages NMC does, but, but and, and then because of that, it arguably has greater longevity, although if you look after the NMC battery pack, 
by not charging it past 80% every day, not reaching those high voltages, then you should be okay in the long term. Greater charging speeds generally with NMC because of those voltages, um, and you can, uh, with LFP, charge to 100% daily or you know more frequently than you can with NMC. So if you need that extra range every day, then that's where LFP comes in really handy. So they're kind of the main points, everyone. Um, again, my disclaimer is that I'm not an engineer. I'm just telling you what I know, what I've read, what my lived experience is. So if you know more, if I've said something not quite right, make sure you leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll read every single comment. Um, and yeah, tell me in the comments as well. Uh, has this cleared things up for you? You know, which battery chemistry would you choose for your next car? For example, we've got some vehicles in the market now, like MG, even Xpeng, uh, where, where the standard range or the base model is an LFP battery pack compared to the long range, which is, which is NMC. You've now heard me talk about the differences. Is that going to affect the way you, uh, or which vehicle you buy now? Do you need that extra range? Do you need that increased charging speed? Are you more concerned about stability and, 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 and um, fire safety from that point of view? Does that matter? Are you worried about longevity? Are you worried about uh, V2L, V2G, V2X, V2H? where the car is supplying the home? Do you want that extra cycle life? There's a lot of considerations there, so leave those comments below. I will try to help you where I can, and I'm sure our community will. Okay, so I'm back home. Uh, ironically, my GoPro got too hot and uh, it shut down by itself. But um, I think I got everything out I wanted to say. So um, yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Leave a comment and hope you enjoyed that video. Until next time, happy charging.